Hi, it's been almost a month since our visit to Iceland and videos are already on the channel so please check them out. But not everything was shown on the videos. Everything what happened behind the scenes and our preparations, um, that's not included. This video is meant just for that. So if you are interested what happened in this strange COVID times when we were in Iceland, please stick around. Just one comment before we start. As a non-native English speaker, I will unintentionally mispronounce some words. And I cannot get rid of my strange accent. So please, please bear with me. If you can't, I can only say sorry. Okay, let's start then. Before we started our journey, we had to register our arrival and print out confirmation with barcode. This allowed us to be tested, twice to be precise. Of course, we had to pay for it. It was about 100 pounds, if I remember correctly. We also had digital copies of this reservation in hand, just to be on a safe side. And we had to install on our phones tracking app. To register, we had to have hotel booked for at least five to six nights. It means for the time of mandatory quarantine. It may sound simple, but not all hotels agreed to offer rooms for quarantined people. I don't blame them. Of course, the most expensive hotels did not see the problem and the rooms were available, but we are looking for something more economic. Because, first of all, hotels in Iceland are expensive in general. Secondly, it was extra cost. I mean this quarantine. And we wanted to keep it as small as possible. In regard to hiking, we changed plans at least a couple of times. Originally, we planned to hike from Rjupnanevelir to Skogar, 128 kilometers over six days. This route is a collection of three different trails and Laugavegur is one of them. But then first restrictions were introduced. After arrival to Iceland, you had to have one test and after five days another one. But you didn't have to quarantine. So knowing those restrictions, we reduced length of our hike to two trails just to be able to do it in four or five days and then come back and be tested for another time. Shortly before our departure to Iceland, New restrictions were announced and now we had to quarantine for five to six days, so between the tests. We were about to cancel our trip, but, well, it didn't feel right and, to be honest, we were devastated. It was adventure we were waiting for almost a year. We had a couple of days to rethink what to do. We reach out to subreddit Visit Iceland to confirm what's actual situation and with help of people who actually were there, we made a plan which gave us chance of success in this crazy time. There were no queues to board a plane and no waiting on airplane stairs. The plane we were traveling with was almost empty. For over 200 seats, just 20 plus were taken. Each of us had 9 seats around that were free. It was my first such flight and I guess, and I hope, the last one. After arrival to Keflavik airport, test. If you had 
COVID-19 test, you know what I'm talking about. Stick to throat and another one to nostril and you feel like, you're, like they are trying to reach your brain. Just terrible. After that shock, this usually very busy at this time of the year airport looked like picture from zombie apocalypse movie. Shops closed, almost no people. And I mean no people. Empty checkout desks, nobody waiting for the flights. Extremely strange feeling, but it was mixed with enthusiasm that we made it. We are in Iceland. We took a taxi to the hotel and it was our first interaction with Icelander. Older drivers seemed not to be able to read the address and was attempting to read it while driving first 500 meters. Just in case we checked if our seat belts are securely fastened. We had trouble to communicate in English. What was a surprise because we are told that uh, almost everybody speaks English in Iceland. After a short trip we arrived to our hotel and before we get out of the taxi Young man approached us and told taxi driver in beautiful Icelandic that hotel is closed due to COVID. We were still smiling. Then he translated the same into English and we were immediately terrified. Fortunately, hotel owner moved all guests to another hotel nearby. We were happy with that as a new hotel was definitely at least one star better. So now we had two stars. Wow. We booked in, ate something, relaxed, and after four hours after the tests, the results came in through the app. We were COVID free and could start our quarantine. The hotel was located in former American Air Force base and we stayed in one of its buildings, what was quite cool. Not much was replaced since Americans. Military wardrobes, American faucets and toilets. But the beds and carpet were new. The hotel was clean and its staff was friendly and as helpful as they could be. They were so kind that once we were offered free breakfast. At that time it was very appreciated gesture. We both stayed in one room for five days and didn't leave it at all. According to the government guidelines, we could go for a walk, but knowing that we'll be tested again, we didn't want to risk and isolated from outside world almost completely. We lived on home deliveries. Groceries were delivered by local company, aha, uh -huh. and twice we ordered from Domino's. The days in quarantine dragged, but eventually the day of second test came. We had to travel to hospital, wait in a queue and get tested outside. We got results in just five hours, again through the app, what gave us a mandate to travel across Iceland. Before we start talking about hike itself, I just mentioned that because everything is quite expensive in Iceland, we brought camping food with us. There is a limit of amount of food you can bring to Iceland and it's 3 kilograms per person, which we used in full. In terms of navigation and communication on the trail, we had with us a GPS map uh, 66i. It's a Garmin device, combined a GPS receiver with um, Inrich uh, communication technology. We also used Hiker app in offline mode and we had with us a Cicerone guidebook by Paddy Dillon. It was more than we ever needed. The trail is very well waymarked. There is a numbered waymark almost every 100 meters. There is no need to book campsite uh, beforehand 
at any stage. But if you plan to use one of the huts, it should be booked in advance. There was nobody in in the huts when we were there, but of course, it's extremely unusual situation thanks to COVID-19. We reached the trail using the most popular way, the bus. Travel from Reykjavik takes about two and a half hours. The bus is kind of special uh, in that way that it's modified to be able to cross rivers and move on challenging terrain. Usually it is a very busy trail, but it was much less busy due to coronavirus. We started to walk with uh, not more than eight other people. Later, during the hike, we saw four of them. So there were no crowds at all. Trail starts at Landmanalagur, the place where many people stay first night after arrival. We didn't see point uh, of that and hit a trail just after a quick meal. If it's your first experience with hiking in Iceland, you will be surprised, just like us, by the smell, because straight at the beginning you can see, and smell of course, geothermal activity. Looks great on photos, but believe me, it smells like rotten eggs. You are following the trail through some most amazing landscape and the highest point on the trail, Mount Stotul. Then you reach first hut and camping spot, Hoskultskali. We decided to stay a couple kilometers further along the trail. To get to this place, you will be quite often walking on the snow, but because it was end of August, it was the lowest level of snow we could have. But it also means that the trail was very mm, bumpy. There was a lot of ups and downs. If we came in June or July, early July, all this space between small hills would be filled with snow, making our route nearly flat. I guess this is the price we had to pay for being able to walk on volcanic ash. Next possible hut to book is Alftavatn, and we stopped there for a break, but finished our walk a few kilometers further at Hvangil uh, Hut, almost exactly halfway of uh, Laugavegur Trail. The most remarkable and worth mentioning from this day is crazy steep drop to the valley created by glacier. Also, it was a day when we met people doing this trail in opposite direction, on their bikes. That seemed insane for us because of the hills you have to cross. Good for them. On third day, we passed Emstrur huts, located beautifully. And when we were approaching them, the sun came out, lighting up surrounding mountains. It was just beautiful. And we met nobody this day. The whole trail was ours. We finished the trail about an hour before sunset reaching Thorsmork and staying in the hut. We were the only guests there for 75 beds available. Location of the hut is just breathtaking and it was a shame that we couldn't stay there longer. After coming back to Reykjavik, we stayed three nights at the city campsite. City campsite is huge and offers any facilities you may need while backpacking in Iceland. So you have of course toilets and showers, but you have also laundry and drying room. You have entertainment room closed during COVID times. You have fire pit for grilling. You have multiple charging points. Really anything you may think about, it is there. Two days we spent walking around Icelandic capital and one day we used to take a golden circle tour. It's a bus trip to a few cool places in southwest Iceland. There's another video just about it so you can may check it out. We moved around Reykjavik using public transport. The tickets can be bought through the special app. I'll leave the link in the description. 
When we were in Reykjavik, we went for city card. It's a good option if you want to spend some time there. It gives you access to public transport and also some places like uh, swimming pools, museums and other tourist attractions. In general, Iceland is very cashless payment country. We had some cash with us, but to be honest, we struggled to spend it because every single place accepts cards. Even places like Haas on the Laugavegur trail, they give you option to pay with card. So, to be honest, there's no point of taking cash with you. The standard tourist spots were deserted and car parks, usually full, offered plenty free spaces. Because there were no tourists, half of the bars and restaurants were closed. Some of them actually never opened this season. But the nature was still there and didn't disappoint. We left Iceland with the plane slightly more packed up, but still with many free spaces. Before arrival to UK, we had to submit lengthy COVID form, but there was no test on the border. In general, we're very pleased with the whole trip and don't regret going there. Sure, we spent more money than we wanted, but to be honest, this trip was one of the very few good things that happened this year. And that's it. Thanks for watching and to the next one.